Let's see how I made the cover up images for the paper animations. In my previous video, it looks like I confused some of you by not explaining in more detail how to make these images. Now you will see how simple it is. Wow. I mentioned in the main video that I used Photoshop, but this is an almost 10 years old version, so I looked for an alternative. This is how I got to Photo P, which is available to anyone on the web and is totally free, and it is almost identical to all features we need, even in the hotkeys. But before we start, Give me three seconds to thank you for all the love and comments and support I received from you. Okay, let's get started. Go to Google and type Photo P and click on the first result, which will take you to PhotoP.com. Now click on the new project, then enter the values 1920 for the width and 1080 for the height on the left side, or simply click on this preset. This will automatically fill in the previous values. We could pre-select the background color. But for now, we'll leave it white and change it later. Okay, click on Create. This will create a new project. The menu is at the top, the various functions are on the left, and the layers are on the right. Click on the small square at the bottom left, which is the color picker. You can also set it manually, but if you want exactly the same yellow as in the animation, then enter the following values. R stands for red which should be 250, G for green, which should be 196, and B for blue, which should be 51. Or you can enter FAC 433 at the bottom, which is the code for the combination of these colors. Quick tip, if you want perfect red, write 255 for red and 0 for the others. Similarly, if blue then B255, if green then G255, the rest 0. Click OK. Let's change the color of the background layer. To do this, go to the left and select the Paint Bucket tool. Sometimes it defaults to the Gradient tool, so left-click to select it, then right-click to switch. Click anywhere on the white square and it will recolor the whole thing to the previously selected color. Now open a new tab and find a picture you like. I will stick with the Lumbo shown in my main video. Press the left mouse button, hold it down and simply drag it from one page to the other where the photo P is, then release it. Sometimes it creates two layers, one for the pre-image and one for the regular image. Simply click on the preview layer and delete it. Let's adjust the size and position of the image a bit. Click on it and press the Control T hotkey. Damn it! It opens a new window. Okay, then go to the edit menu, then transform and finally scale. Just move it to the center before resizing. Adjust until you are satisfied with the result. Then click on the magic wand icon and select the area outside the image on the image layer. The Control plus Shift plus I hotkey selects the opposite of the original selection, but learning from the previous ones, I prefer to use the menu, so select and then inverse menu. This will select the entire image. We do it this way because if we had clicked on the image, the whole thing would not have been selected due to color transitions. That's why it's good to use transparent PNG files without a background, but with a normal image you can solve it with a little extra cropping work. Let's continue. I hide the image layer so that the next step can be seen better. I click into the background layer, then I press the delete button. This will delete the shape of the limbo from the background layer, and with that the cover layer is created. All we have to do is save the cover and image layers separately. Go to File, Export As and choose the PNG format. Then press the Save button, just give it a recognizable name. Now we go back to CapCut and import our images and animation. Place the layers as we did in the main video, first the yellow background, then the image, then the animation and finally the overlay. Let's go to the end of the animation and jump 10 frames with Shift plus right arrow and cut the unnecessary parts with Control plus B and delete them. Let's zoom in, click somewhere where the red color is visible in the animation. See, I didn't forget. Remove it using the chroma key. Since the animation is loud, I lowered the volume a little. I imported another background to show how to use what we just did in your videos. I merged the layers, then put the new background behind the existing animation since there is no other layer below it, and then rearrange it. I enlarge the background and place it higher, and put a keyframe on it to animate it. 
I go to the end of the animation, then cut off the overhanging background and place another keyframe, then move the background down. I hide the animation layer so that you can better see what I did. All we have to do is remove the yellow background on the merged layer using the chroma key. And we are ready. I hope everything was understandable and I managed to answer all the questions from the puzzle. See you next time.